Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about DWM, which is the Dynamic Window Manager from Sucklist.org. If you don't know who Sucklist is, they are an organization that makes a minimal free software. Uh, their motto is software that sucks less. It's supposed to take a lot of the complication out of bloated software and they have their own philosophy about how things should be, etc. Now, it's usually um, configured through the source code rather than through an ordinary configuration file. And this allows it to run quicker, be more secure, and also be more minimal. Uh, that's just the way they do things. But on top of all the philosophical stuff, uh, I think DWM is also just a really useful window manager. Of course, it's a tiling window manager, so it automatically formats all of the uh, windows uh, into pre-configured layouts. This is the default tiling one. Um, you can get monocle mode, which is basically just full screen. You can go into floating mode. One sec. Floating mode, where the windows are opened into ordinary floating windows, and they can be rearranged like a non-tiling window. And you can also add fib, um, lots of different custom versions, like Fibonacci mode, where they're all spiraled. Uh, and you can also have, for instance, grid mode, where they're all in even grids. Lots of the customization beyond just editing the variables comes from adding in patches. Uh, they have lots of them listed right here on their website. That is dwm.sucklist.org. Um, if you want to start customizing it, just download the code. The easiest way to do this is just to copy the git clone uh, command they have. And... I normally uh, store things in doc source git, uh, my suckless programs, but for now I'm just going to store this default one in slash temp, just for a temporary, oh yeah, I already downloaded it, uh, I'm going to remove that just to show the download process. I should also make the text larger to show what I'm doing. Um, it's not that long of a download, it's minimal software, of course. And here are all the files for it. The code is, uh, not that long. You, if you know the C programming language, you can read through it and understand it. But most of, one moment, most of the stuff you're going to do will be through config.h which at first is just uh, copied from config.def.h or default.h. So after you do your configurations, you just want to run sudo make clean install. I'm going to do that real quickly. And you'll see we now have our config.h. So you could have just copied that over, but you can Edit all the variables here as you like. It's fairly simple. This default version is really straightforward. So for now, I've already compiled this. So I'm just going to close out of X and reopen into this default version to show what it's like. Real quickly, I'm going to need to change my Xnit RC. I'm going to get rid of all the specific setups I had on my version. And you just want to make sure you have exec or execute dwm, just so it um, executes dwm uh, at runtime. And now I'll be closing out and reopening dwm. Okay, so this is what the default dwm looks like. It's pretty crude, pretty simple, um, but this just works. Uh, of course, you have the tiling 
layouts. Uh, by default, it opens their ST or simple terminal, which is also from Suckless. You'd have to, if you use a different terminal emulator, you'd have to add that into the code. And the default um, ST also looks much simpler than this. I've configured this, of course, but that's for another video. Um, let's go into the code. I'll resize that. Oh, wrong file. We want to go into DWM and config.h config. So by default, um, the borders for all, all the windows are just a single pixel. I usually like that a bit larger. Let's make that, f oh wait, it says changing a read-only file. So let's change mod um, read write to config.h, sudo that. So, as super user, let's make ourselves able to read and write that. So now we can change that. I'm gonna change the border pixel. Okay, it still says read only. Uh, okay, I just overrode that. That should work anyway. Uh, by the way, to override in Vim, you just use the exclamation mark. I'm not sure how you do it in other text editors. I think snap pixel refers to, I've never changed that, just the default works. Um, but I think it has to do with placement of windows. Show bar, there are a few, Suckless is kind of against having comments. They believe that the code should be the comments through making it readable and simple. Uh, but some stuff in here, is helpful. Uh, so if you want a status bar at the top right here, um, you'd have to, normally you want to keep it. This is the simplest and probably the best um, status bar I've dealt with in a window manager. So I just use that. Um, and of course you have the Alt B to hide it. But yeah, you can change that to one or zero. And then you can also, change that to zero to make the bar on the bottom, like in Windows or something. But I normally keep it at the top, so I'll do that for now. You can also look at the fonts. So on their site, uh, they list having the font in a format like this, which you can view through the X font cell, X font select. Um, and you can sort of put things in to pick a specific font, but I've never really done this, nor has it ever worked very well for me. So for now, I'm just, what I do, FC list, which is a way of listing the fonts, and then pipe that into a grep insensitive. I'll make these larger. Um, and then the name of the font you're looking for. I normally do Terminus, and on my font, it's just named Terminus. So you can do Terminus. That's a bitmap font, so size doesn't exactly matter in this context. You can, Terminus comes with a lot of different ones, so you can do the 14, but I don't think bitmaps exactly work this way. If you were to do a vector font, like Fira code, let me make sure it's the right name. Yeah, Fira code. Uh, you would do the size and the pixel size. You can also do stuff like anti-aliasing equals true, or you can also make it false, of course. And then in DWM, you can also list other fonts. Say I want to add uh, Noto Sans CJK JP for a Japanese character's font. And then the D menu font. Basically, D menu is used. One moment, I forget the bindings 
it uses Alt by default, and I normally use Windows. I'm actually going to turn on screen key so you can see what I'm doing. So, Alt P by default, I guess for prompt. That basically just lets you choose the application you want. So, if I want to run SD or Alacrity, I could open those. Um, so that's D menu. It can also be used as a generic selecting application. I'll just make that Fira code for now. Also size 14, so it matches up with this. Then you can also choose your colors. Um, the default ones aren't very pretty. Um, you can go to a site like this one, terminal.sexy, and uh, this is a good way of just making a f color scheme if you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, let's switch this to the main one with Alt Enter. Uh, the color scheme I use now is actually s kind of taken from one of the fonts they have on their website, except I just changed the background color. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to look for that right now. Let's just pick a random... Yeah, I'm not going to look for that right now. We, Let's say... So basically the way the color works, um, you have the all these different colors. You can define another one if you want. For a while I did that uh, static constant character like I did color accent. I want the same amount of characters as everything else so something like that and then equals maybe red, <coughs> red or something. Uh, that is like a really sharp red. Let's go for something like this color. That's A5423. Yeah, that. Now, another useful tool I use, which you'd have to install, is G Color 2. If you want to move the windows, you hold down the mod key and the left click at the same time, and you use the right to uh, make the windows larger if that's possible. In this case, it's not. But you can view what it looks like by putting A54242. Looks like that. You can also select, etc. I kind of like that gray here. I'll quickly put in some of the random colors I see in there. So it looks like for the scheme norm, uh, that's like... For these normal, unselected windows, what the context will be. So the foreground color, it chooses a pretty light gray. Let's go with that. So 707880. Then for gray 2, that's being used for the window border for unselected borders, or unselected windows. Like here. Again, it's kind of hard to tell since it's only one pixel. Um, but yeah. For the border, for the unselected, they chose something slightly darker. So let's go with this one. I'll just copy it. Great too. Vim, at least in my setup, it automatically copies things when I delete them, so I kind of had to go back. Grace, wait, did I change the wrong thing? Yeah, I did. So I'll copy this here. I'll put in the place of that BBB. Now for the dark gray, let's go with, let's see what that's being used as. So the background for these windows, I kind of want that to be pretty dark, so let's just go with this background color. Uh, 
I'll just type it this time. 1D1, F21. And this one's also unconfigured, so... That's like the lightest color, which is being used as selected foreground. Let's see what that looks like real quick. Yeah, it's a really bright white. So just for that foreground. I kind of like to swap out the backgrounds and foregrounds. So let's let's just do here. So for the selected border, I'll change it to that accent color I chose. Unselected, we'll go with that right there. Background for the status bar, we'll go with the dark gray. Foreground, we can go with the light gray. Foreground of selected. Let's keep that as, let's actually, yeah, that should be good. Uh, since I'll be doing it against that same accent color. And I like to keep these in line, so I just deleted that character. So they're all the same length. You can also name the tags whatever you want. Um, I, by default, it's one, two, three, four, through nine. These are pretty sane options. I actually tend to use the same, uh, like types of things in each tag. So they're called tags, but they're similar to workspaces. Um, so in number one, I usually just have my browser, uh, in three, I'll have a music player, in four, I'll have messaging, etc. And by default, it's mod key and C, or wait, mod key, control, and then a tag, and you can view multiple and toggle through them. Like if I open this window here, and I just tried mod control, here, let's screen key. Mod control one. Now we're viewing both of these at the same time. I can move to one and three. I can toggle that again. And if I go to two, I can open another window and that's in all of those. And I can again, move that to a specific one as well. Um, so let's just close out these now. Won't need this. Uh, so these should be fine, but I'll add some weird ones in just to uh, test out what they look like. I added a Japanese font, so I'll add some Japanese characters. Uh, Alright, that should be fine. Um, so, you can also add specific rules for um, the different windows. For example, using this, you can choose for Windows to open in a certain tag by default. You can choose if they're floating by default. GIMP is floating by default, so if I open that, you'll see it's in a floating window here. And this is also just a floating window. I don't know exactly why that is. I actually have my drawing <coughs> application Krita floating by default, mainly because all the different options and stuff open in different windows. So that's just the easiest way. So I don't think I need to add these now. There's a useful patch you can install for um, what is called swallowing. So you can Basically, you can choose is terminal, and then if it spawns a window from the terminal, then it will actually occupy the space of that, rather than, say, I open gcolor from the terminal, you'll see the terminal still open, but if I had swallowing enabled, this would basically take up the space of the terminal, and then if I close it, it would display this. I should actually, I'm going to quickly run through these before I go on to applying some patches. Basically these, um, 
I have never touched these. They're fine. These are the layouts. You can reorder them. So if you wanted things to be floating by default, you could just put on top. However, you will have to change that in the keybinds to choose the one you want. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, you can define commands like this. Uh, normally, it's fairly complex to add shortcuts and commands in DWM, so I'm not going to touch on too much. I think it's actually better to use SXHKD or a simple X hotkey daemon. Um, I'll get on that later in the video. Um, so basically just follow the pattern if you really need to do that, but you probably don't. With uh, the daemon use command, it, you can see it uses all these variables defined from earlier. So you have dmenu mon uh, right there, dmenu font from the beginning, uh, and then it uses color gray, uh, etc. You can of course reorder the the syntax how you want it to be, um, but that's. The defaults are pretty sane with this regard. If you want, you can open up the manual for dmenu. Dmenu run doesn't have one, but if you open up the dmenu, you can look at all the different options. So then for terminal command, you actually do want this one. You could do a simple x hotkey daemon but I just stick with this. I use basically all the default keys and then add custom ones in SXHKD. So real quick, I'm going to change the mod key. Let's see where that's defined. Uh, mod one mask, so that's the left alt. If you want to use the windows key like I use, or the super key as it's technically called, you want to use mod 4 mask. I just find this easier to use and it's also more compatible with things. So, so yeah. Um, so this should also be fairly straightforward. Um, X key P will spawn the D menu command, which is defined up here. X key, um, return will open up okay mod key shift and return all together that will spawn your terminal command then this will toggle bar uh, it uses vim keybinds that by default i forgot to mention this so it uses j and k to cycle through the applications um unlike a manual tiling when Unlike a manual tiling window manager, where you'd probably use um, L and H to go left and right, or J and K to go up and down, it just cycles with J and K. Um, for I and D, you can basically move things up in the priority list. So I just pressed I, it increased it. So now it's on the master side. And if you press D, you can bring it back down. This is useful if you want like two things on one side and three on another. Again, by default, the default um, layout only uses uh, one master window on the left and all the child um, windows on the right. Basically, the idea is that if you're opening a new thing, that's like the most important immediate thing. So it's the biggest. There are also patches for that changing that functionality, but that that's just how that is. Um, so all of these, you don't really necessarily need to know. You can kind of just learn them. Um, if there's one that you don't understand, you can read its mod key and T. You can see what it does 
it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and yeah, that's basically all you need to know. Just write and quit that. Uh, I'll also close out of Cube Browser. So, real quick, I'm just gonna sudo make clean install, prove that I didn't have any errors in it. And see that compiled perfectly fine, just a few seconds. I actually need to uh, open Cube Browser back up so I can show how to do patches. So patches can be downloaded, or you can save them anywhere. Um, they give a quick informational. One problem with Suckless is that they don't exactly document things very well. Um, it says on their page right here, uh, they want to keep their user base small and elitist. You have to kind of be competent at what you're doing. So real quickly, I'm just going to show the simplest ways you can add patches. So one way I normally do it, you can make a patches directory, change into that directory. I am in DWM, okay. Let's find one we want to use. Let's, let's start with the Fibonacci patch. So this, let's see if we can find a date in here. Sometimes that's helpful to pick the last one. 18 April, 2020. This one's also 18 April, so you can probably pick any one. I'll just pick the bottom. Sometimes it's the top, most recent. You kind of have to check, and in some cases just guess. I would say keep backups um, in case you like mess up your code. Undoing patches can be difficult sometimes. So um, I actually keep everything. Uh, I like keep my configurations on Git so I can like download an old version before I push the broken version to the server. I should probably make a like second branch for testing, but I haven't gotten to that yet. I just do everything on master. So back to patching. W get and the link. That's a pretty simple way to just get in the terminal. Although if you want, you could like save <laughs> or whatever, but that's pretty simple. So if you wanted, you could view it. Um, some people choose or would prefer to manually patch them. You can see the diff. This is called a diff. It shows the difference between uh, like the new and old versions. It basically gives context. This probably isn't the best way to do it, but I normally just open up the code. It says this is in config.def.h. So let's open that up. Static cons, wait, layout, layouts. Okay, just one occurrence, this is where it is. Um, and it's adding in a Fibonacci.c. It's adding these things in into the array. You've got some other stuff going on in the, for example, you have this in the, what am I doing? In the Fibonacci.c file, which it's adding. I'm just going to show you the more automatic way I do this. Of course, if you know what you're doing, you can try doing it manually. But what I do, is git apply dash dash white space equals fix dash dash reject. I should definitely make an alias for this, but that's the full thing. Patches and then DWM Fibonacci. One quick thing, 
sometimes you want to do the patches in a specific order because some are less compatible um, or you, there's just more manual stuff you'll have to do. But let's just get apply and you'll see okay it actually said it did that cleanly so no errors. The white space fix that's like if there's any wacky spaces that mess things up it'll automatically fix that and dash dash reject will produce some error logs um, if anything goes wrong, so you know what to fix. So I'm gonna sudo make install, and that compiled cleanly. Let's add some more. Hmm. Let's do scratchpad is a useful one I use. There's actually two sometime. These are all just made by random people who want to add. So you can read the difference between them. I do not use this one, I don't think. So let's just add this normal one. I believe this is 6.2. You can see from the default version, that's just 6.2. Uh, I'll make this larger so you can read wget, oh wait, uh, this is in the patches directory, so I'll wget that, and now we have that download there, so we can do the whole git apply thing again, but you can just swap out for the scratchpad file, that applied cleanly, I'm trying to find one that just breaks it so we can so I can show you okay see this has an error in there so let's see if there are any reg reject files doesn't look like it uh, yeah I hope I'm lucky enough to fix this that's in dwm.c I'm gonna leave this error up I'll open this in another window in vim Previous directory ddwm.c and it's in line 1057, I believe. Yeah, I think this is the spot. Uh, scratchpad name is undeclared. So I'm thinking we'll just need to declare that somewhere. Let's see if there are any other instances of scratchpad name. That's the only one. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to take a quick look at mine to see what it looks like. But I'm guessing I'll just do a simple, like, integer declaration or something. So let's do invim doc source git dwm. That's dwm.c. So, scratchpad name. Weird. I only have one. I'm maybe it's in a different file. Let's see here. I'm. This is like a really inefficient way. Okay, there. So I'm going to. Okay, so cat everything. So it just lists the contents of every file. Grep dash F, so show the file. And we're looking for scratch pad name. Oh whoops, that's the that, that's the wrong thing. Um, okay, so it looks like there is a scratchpad name character being defined somewhere. I'm guessing that's config.h. Okay, yes. So I think in your... You actually don't want to change your... 
dwm.c, you want to change the config.def.h, the default one. Let's change it over. Config.def.h. Um, that was declared with. Oh, so it actually is here. Oh, wait. I know the problem. This was done. So. The problem is that config.h hasn't had all these things applied. So let's diff config.h, config.def.h to find all the differences. So firstly, just all the stuff we configured. It's probably a bad idea to patch after customizing. I would say definitely go for patching everything you want that you can add before you try doing other stuff. So, all these brackets pointing this way, the ones pointing to the right are this right file we added. So, here, all open yet another window. Let's, uh, oh yeah, I'm not, forgot I'm not in my custom DWM version. I'll just increase that there. So, cd temp DWM pat, oh, not patches, temp DWM open config.h Let's just clear that and re... I'll make it smaller so I can actually read it. I don't think you uh, viewers really need that. I don't know how much this is. It's getting... Okay. This is dumb, but just make a huge block of lines to see where it begins and ends. Okay, there. So ignore all this, ignore all this, and the relevant parts start here. So remember, right above our layouts, we, we want to do include Fibonacci.c. That will basically just include the uh, C program that deals with the Fibonacci sequence and then I'm actually just going to copy these over not typing that out just get rid of those characters that aren't supposed to be there and then we've got our uh, scratch pad thingy right here. Just get rid of those greater than signs. And then we want to add in the custom keybinds it gave us. So again, with these things that are specific to DWM, uh, you want to leave these keys in the code so it can basically to handle the code that's specific to DWM. I just said the same thing twice, but that's just needed to work. So let's try compiling that now. Okay, great. Uh, that worked without errors. So now I'm going to try closing X again and we'll see how it looks when we open it. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we now have uh, the new version of DWM open. It looks completely different. Uh, we've got the thick borders, um, the larger and different font. Uh, we've got our random text and the kanji workspaces. <clears throat> I, wouldn't recommend actually going for something so inconsistent, but you can do that if you want. 
Um, so let's see what's next. This is, like scheme is massively inconsistent, uh, but it matches what was on this site originally, and it looks pretty okay. Uh, of course, you'd probably want to fine tune that a bit more, unless you like it this way. So, one thing you might want to do next is change the bar and also the wallpaper. So, for the bar, Basically, all of these things are done through xset root. If you use xset root dash name text, that basically just appears in the bar. Anything you put there, it'll just update to that. Um, so the way I used to have a status bar, as well as many other people, uh, I wrote a script, of course. And I called it DWM status. And this, it basically had a bunch of functions declared. And at the end, uh, I actually had it like do different stuff if I was on a laptop or a desktop. But basically what it did, we had a while loop. And uh, while true do, meaning just f infinitely, it would xset root and then the output of every single function that I cared about divided by these separators um, and it, I'd give this leap 30 so every 30 seconds it would update with new information let's just try running that see what it looks like dwm status oh yeah I forgot to add a font a yeah a font for the icons i use special characters here let's quickly go over to the dwm one of the downsides about configuring through source is that you can't just quickly reload like in many other window managers like bspwm i3 or herbstluft vm um, you actually have to close and reopen each time. There might be fonts that try to deal with this, but not really. Uh, that's just a reality of living in DWM. So what I use for fonts is a bitmap CG that wouldn't really fit with the vectors I chose to use, but I'll just put that in the code for now. Make me install. I actually don't intend to close and reopen this. Um, but yeah, whatever. Um, let's actually just pkill dwm status. I don't need that running right now. Um, so, what I. Actually, real quick, I'm going to talk about how you do the that wallpapers. So let's just go into my backgrounds directory, pick background. This bitmap folder had some interesting stuff in it. I'll preview these with the ranger. They all <clears throat> look like this. So you'd use, let's look at the manual for exit root to see the dif different commands. So xset root dash bitmap is one option you can use. Actually, none of these are bitmap folders, so they're all technically PNGs and GIFs, so forget about that. If you just want a solid color, uh, you'd just do xset root dash solid. Let's do ff for red. And you've got your nice sharp red background. If you're more simple, you can go for a black or a white. Again, you can use any hex for this. I just use 111 for my terminal background, so that would match. Oh, by the way, this is a scratch pad. 
By default, it's mod and the grave key, if you don't know what that looks like. It's that character right there. Um, this is something really useful. If I just want to quickly do a command, or even just like keep notes in my text editor, I can do that, open and close it real quick. Really uh, helpful stuff. Um, so let's go back to X set root. Okay, let's forget about X set root. I don't exactly remember how to do that now. What I normally use these days is H set root. And there's a reason for this. Um, I use a compositor. Compositors are helpful for preventing screen tearing. Uh, and they can also provide cool effects like transparency and sh like shadows for your windows, etc. So if you do pycom-b that runs in the background, you can see we've got a shadow and other wacky stuff going on now. If you change, by default, if you haven't changed your config directory, it will probably just be in .config. I've actually symlinked them, so they lead to the same place. But pycom, pycom.conf, you'll want to install this. Oh, by the way, there was uh, a specific patch I needed to install from some random spot on the internet. Um, if you want to get rid of the transparent border issue. Uh, I'll see if I can find that. But basically, here's where you can configure PyCom. If you write that instantly, reconfigures, we don't have shadows anymore. You can change the size and all that stuff. Um, so why I was talking about this was because you cannot use, um, it X set root with a compositor. It just won't work. I guess name does, but other things like solid, uh, that doesn't work. So H set root dash solid. Let's go for a different color. That does work. So let's look at the manual for that. It has, whoops, wrong thing. It has many more, oh, that doesn't even have a manual. Dash H will show all options. Many more things than X set root. Um, so I haven't even tried many of these, but Let's do tile. That's the one I was looking for. So I'll go back into my We're in the background directory here. So let's do h set root dash tile. I think 94.png is the one I use. Oh, that's not even it, but there's a nice autumn background right there. And I could do 97, I think it was. Whoops, that's OBS. Yeah, this is the one I use right now. Nice Greekish pattern. Um, and basically, the way you want to configure this is add it to your Xenit RC. Uh, see, I just commented that out since I wanted to show the default look of it. Uh, I'm also going to add this. Uh, DWM blocks in so I can use that when I go back to it. Back to DWM. Uh, what's next? Okay, so now I'll just talk about... Actually, before I get to DWM blocks, I'm going to talk about SXHKD. By the way, lots of these packages I'm talking about, the commands, You'll have to install them uh, 
for arch, like I'm using, lots of them are just referred to by their names, but you can look them up. Shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, so xs, this is a pain to type lots of the time. Simple x hotkey, wait, oh, conf sxhkd and the sxh, the configuration file. You can actually look on the Arch Wiki. They do a pretty good guide on that. Um, SX HKD. So, of course, the Arch Wiki is always a pretty detailed resource on things. Uh, for this, they give a simple example of what to do, what the file name is, etc. Um, so for my, basically how it works, um, it's kind of like a shell script. You just do the keys you want, for example, super plus escape, uh, super plus escape. That should, that just reloads it. I have XF86 audio play. Uh, all these things just toggle, toggle the music player client which is the client for the music player daemon, MPD. All these other things. Another useful thing I have is uh, super plus n, which I can use to click things. I just super end that. If there's like something I need to click a bunch of times, but I don't want to move like the mouse or whatever, uh, I can just hover over it and just use the keyboard shortcuts and that simulates the click. Super X is my lock screen. I don't know if this will show, but that just uses uh, S lock, which is the suckless lock, and it just shows blue when you're typing, red if you type it wrong, or if you backspace on an empty character, and then it just logs in, pretty simple. And then I also have some screenshot short shortcuts. Uh, you can just like do that and it'll save to my directory. You can just do any shell command in here. And yeah, it's pretty useful and much simpler and more convenient than adding it in the source code of DWM. Uh, now, if you don't know the name of a key, like for example, I had like XF audio next, you likely won't remember that, nor will I. So I believe it's X event tester. I can't recall the name. One moment. Okay, sorry about that. The command for the X event tester is just XEV. And this opens a thing. It shows like every mouse movement, every key, etc. Let's try pressing a special key, like print screen. Uh, we get here. I'm gonna move off of that and just use the command, wait, okay. That to change. And then we get print screen. This can be hard to read. You might have to like close out of that and read through all this nonsense what see okay we have super l we have print that's the names of them and then if you want to add them uh dwm config.h so you basically just do x key or xk in caps and then underscore that name there's also this like useful command which you can type anything and it tells the specific actual name that's useful i'll put that in the description below um in case you need that basically it runs awk which replaces characters in order to get rid of all the verbose information So now I will be talking about DWM blocks. 
DWM blocks, I believe, was inspired by i3 blocks, which is for the i3 um, window manager. Let's just look up DWM blocks. So there's the official one from uh, Torin Fail, and there's also a Luke Smith fork of it. I actually had problems with that one, so I just used the official. Um, and then you can copy that link. I'll just go into the temporary directory for this. Get clone the link. Then you can cd into that. And just like other actual suckless utilities, you here. But so the way you're supposed to run this is make and then sudo make install. That installs it. You type in your password, and there you go. We have our blocks.h. So you modify that. Uh, they actually tell you to modify your blocks.def.h, and it copies that over when it compiles. Um, but I just, uh, I think it's better not to do that in case you want to keep the default. Uh, anyway, here's what it looks like. After that compiled, we now have the command for that. So, one moment. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, right. I had a specific patch to move things up and down. Uh, but that's not on here right now, so that's slightly inconvenient. Anyway, um, you just run DWM blocks, and right off the bat, we have this right here. It gives us the memory. Uh, so, okay, you can choose an icon, or you can choose not to have an icon at all. Uh, right under this icon, uh, comment and then you can choose the command to run you can literally type in a command or you can just type the name of a script that you want to run um, or you can yeah in these examples they just chose to do entire commands but for anything more complex than a simple one-liner you would want to just use a script that's in your path. Uh, if you don't know your path, just echo dollar sign path, and all these directories are in your path. Normally, you shouldn't be just dumping stuff in user bin. Uh, lots in lots of distros. Um, dot local slash bin should be, but if not, you can add it to your path. Um, so what I have, um, there's this function here, and you can just append path, whatever you want to add. Alternatively, you could just do export, I'll make this a bit larger, export path equals uh, dollar sign, quote, dollar sign path colon and then the directory you want to add, I think. If that doesn't work, just look up uh, what to do. You'll want to add that to a file that runs whenever you open things like a bash rc, or in my case, the zsh env. I think you can also add it to um, xinit rc, just anything like that. Um, so back to DWM blocks, let's add some example things. Let's say I, oh yeah, real quick, you can choose the delimiter. That's the separator basically between items. Uh, I think the pipe is probably the best, but for exemplary purposes, I'll choose to do like a greater sign, I guess. Let's add 
Now, for formatting purposes, I think it's best to try keeping things looking pretty. Uh, wow. The, uh, update interval. Okay, this is not very good. Okay. So, there we go. That's just about there. So, icon, none for this example one. I'll just make it do an echo, dollar sign random. So, a random number, comma. Let's make that update every one second. And update signal, we'll do 66, I guess. Basically, what the update signal is, um, I'll pull up the page. The Luke Smith one actually mentions like the command you're supposed to use. Uh, so you can use any of these commands, uh, any of these two, but apparently the top one works more reliably. So I would just do that. And then basically in the place of this 10, you do whatever the whatever you defined the, what's it called? Update signal, um, like 66. And once you run that, then it will basically update that specific element. The reason you'd want this, um, say, in if you're using DWM status like I was, and you just have a script, it's not very efficient to have every single thing update on like every 30 seconds or whatever. Uh, and if you want to have like your volume status, you might have to have it continuously reading, which just wastes resources. Uh, so yeah, I'll show an example of that in a second. Let's open up, okay, here. So in Vim, you can do exclamation mark and then a command. So I'll do make, sudo make install. Uh, if I'm lucky, that will work. Okay, that didn't work because sudo needs a password. Make, sudo make install. But basically in Vim, if you do exclamation mark in that command, that will work. And you can use the percent sign to refer to the file name. That's just a useful trick. Um, you can do key binds for that, but I haven't gotten into that a whole lot. So we've just compiled that. Let's run DWM blocks. So we have our random thing. We have our greater than sign separating them. Let's try the pkill that updates it. You really can't tell since it's uh, on such a short interval. There's also an error for some reason. I don't know why. pkill dash rt min plus. Uh, I don't know. So let's have one with an update interval of zero. If you're doing something like your volume, you'd probably want it just at zero. Uh, so it's not updating on an interval. So an example of what you do in your, uh, what's it called? S K H that, that thing. You take this volume script and say, whenever you audio mute, oh, the, this is really bad. I didn't realize I had it killing and running like that. I actually don't use volume keys on my desktop. I have like a knob for an audio interface, but that's not relevant. This is what you do. You do like a mixer set master toggle or whatever command you have. And then after you'd have it run the pkill rk rt min plus six six whatever uh dwm blocks and that will just restart the process at the same time immediately after it changes it will run that
you can also opt to use double ampersand instead of colon. That will uh, only run it if the first command succeeds. But yeah, that's personal choice, I guess. I'll stop DWM blocks. I compiled it so I'll open it again. We have the non uh, changing thing. I really don't know why that's changing. Let's try this one. Kill dash dash four four. Uh, PID of DWM blocks. I don't know why it says to add 34. Let's try adding 66. 30. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, I got it. So it's saying this, you have 44, and that's 40, 10 plus 34. So we have, we'd be using 76. Okay. I don't know why this is doing this. It normally works. Just believe me. <laughs> um, and I don't really know what else to do in this DWM informative video. So I think that will be all. Thanks for watching.